Today's video, we're gonna show you how to install the Easy ABL on your Sidewinder X1. So let's get to it. So if you have an X1 printer from Artillery, you might want to add auto bed leveling onto it. Now we have support for our Easy ABL on this machine. The only prerequisite to installing the Easy ABL on your Sidewinder X1 is that you have our Easy LCD screen kit installed. This will not work with the factory touchscreen due to limitations with the firmware on that screen. So I'm going to go over step by step how you route your cables and what you'll need to actually do this installation. So from left to right, we're going to go over all these parts here. This right here is our X1 Z end stop signal cable, and this is what connects from the printer's control board into the three pin connector on our Easy ABL Pro board. This is the Sidewinder X1 OEM mount, and this will allow us to mount the sensor to the right of the blower fan. And you're gonna need two longer M3 screws. These are M3 by 20 millimeters to put these through the fan once you put this bracket in. Some of the X1s may have screws that are long enough, but I would recommend checking yours. And if you don't have two M3 by 20s, you can either pick up the screw assortment we carry or you can source them from your parts bin. These little black adapters here are actually what we're going to use to secure the cable into the extrusion. And there's an STL file available if you wanna print your own. Or if you don't wanna print these, we do have these in the bundle that comes with all the miscellaneous accessories for the X1. The zip ties you'll get with your Easy ABL Pro Kit, which is what is here on the right. We have our 18 millimeter sensor, our Easy ABL control board with its lid, and the power wire for the Easy ABL Kit. So the first step we're gonna do is put the ABL probe mount on here. We're gonna take these two screws out so we can get the Easy ABL probe mount behind it and then use the two longer screws that we showed earlier to attach it back to the plate. So go ahead and remove those two screws. And then take your probe mount and make sure the wires go into this little channel here. Make sure the holes are all lined up and then take your longer M3 by 20 millimeter screws and secure the mount and the fan. Try not to over tighten these because you can deform the actual housing of this fan. Make sure the mount is snug by pushing down on it and then pushing up and you shouldn't see it shift. If it shifts at all, that means one of these two screws or both are loose. So now that we've got the bracket mounted to the hot end, we can go ahead and put our sensor in and start routing the cables. So if your gantry is down in a lower position like mine is, go ahead and move your gantry up about 100 millimeters so you have some area to work with on the machine. So the next step is we need to take this bolt out that holds the bottom wheel that has the eccentric nut on it. We're going to remove this so we can actually move the carriage off of the extrusion to route the sensor wire behind it. So take a three millimeter Allen key and then take pliers and put it on the back of the nut and then unscrew that bolt. Once the nut comes off, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and carefully remove the wheel, the washer, and the eccentric nut. So when you take it off, you should have a little brass washer. This goes between the wheel and the eccentric nut and the eccentric nut itself. And then go ahead and remove the bolt. So the next step you're gonna to wanna to do is move your carriage over a little bit and make sure that you can actually lift it off. So with that bottom wheel removed, you can actually lift it off and tilt it forward. Go ahead and take one of the nuts off of your sensor and then place it into the sensor mount. Put the nut that you took off back on the bottom and snug it up. Now, once the kit's installed, we will need to go through the proper height adjustment and the calibration of the sensor. But right now we're just concerned with routing this wire safely so it doesn't interfere with anything on the carriage. Now, because this printer, if you notice, has ribbon cables instead of a standard wire harness, we have to route this sensor wire a little differently, and this is why we have a dedicated video for it. So, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is make sure that you have enough slack, and if you notice, the wire itself has kind of a natural bend to it. We're gonna loop this over and place it into the extrusion here where the tape ends on the factory ribbon cable. So with the cable in place and the appropriate amount of slack here, go ahead and put the clip on. 
and the clip should be right at the end of where the tape is that holds the factory ribbon cable. And we're gonna go ahead and place an another clip about every two and a half to three inches. So now before we move the carriage over, you want to make sure that this cable has enough slack and should be just a little bit further out than the stock factory cable is. So as you can see here, I have the cable with enough slack that it kind of follows the ribbon cable at a close distance, but it has enough slack to make this travel here. Now we need to put this cable behind the carriage. So go ahead and carefully lift the carriage out like this move it over a little bit and put it back down. Now as you see here when I move this, this cable kind of drooped. You want to make sure that you secure this. See if I turn this here, the cable moves. You want to keep it in a position like this so that it uses the cable's natural bend to keep it in place. So if I move over here, you'll see the cable just naturally goes into the extrusion when we move the carriage back and forth. This is what you want to see. If you see it like this, that's not going to work. You want to turn this cable, so I'm just pinching it, turn it, and you'll see it come up like that. So when you're securing the cable, you want to make sure that your cable looks like this. So I'm going to go ahead and move the carriage over further, and then put a couple more clips in on the extrusion here, and then we're going to go ahead and show you how to get it behind the wire ribbon breakout board here in just a sec. So the next thing we need to do is get this wire behind this board. The only problem is there's T-nuts on the back of these screws. So what we're going to do is unscrew this board and this screw will not be used anymore. And we're gonna put this one in the opposite direction so the T-nut is on this side. This will give us enough clearance behind this board to allow the sensor wire to pass through. These two screws then, which also have T-nuts on them, will hold this board to the extrusion and there won't be any issues only using these two to hold it versus all four of these. So if you're worried about messing up these cables, I would recommend go ahead and lift up the little tabs and remove that and get it out of the way. So go ahead and unscrew these four screws. Just turn these a little bit. You don't need to fully unscrew these two. These have T-nuts on the rear. And once they're loose like this, you should be good. For this one, go ahead and unscrew this one all the way. And the same thing for this one with your X end stop sensor. Now when you're doing this, make sure you keep an eye on the bolt that came out of the end stop sensor because this is the longest one and this one needs to go back in the end stop. So we want to take these two T-nuts out that were from the top and then take the long screw that we took out of the X end stop and put it through the rear and back through the end stop here. Now, if you have, want to use an M3 nut so it's a little bit cleaner, you can, but the included T-nut that comes with the printer works just fine. Let's go ahead and spin that on. And it just needs to be finger tight. And go ahead and put the Easy ABL cable behind the board and put the board back in place. If the board won't go back in place, make sure these are rotated horizontally so that they actually go into the extrusion channel. Tighten them up. And then once you do this one, make sure it is actually secured because this one you can't see. Now, if you're not sure if this one turns, you can actually just look into the side here and see if it turned. So that's why we do this one first. So now with the two screws screwed back down and this one flipped around, you can see we have our cable passing through the rear here. And that's all the cable routing we need to do here on the X gantry. If you did disconnect your cable, like I did here, go ahead and reconnect it. Make sure this little tab is pushed up and press it back down. So the next thing we need to do is move this gantry all the way up so we can make sure we have enough cable so that whether the gantry is fully raised or at the bottom, there's enough cable for the sensor to travel that whole distance. So I'm going to go ahead and move my gantry all the way up to the top. So now with our gantry all the way at the top, we need to make sure that we have enough distance for this cable to travel 
whether the gantry is all the way at the top or all the way at the bottom. Now all we have to do is take the cable and put in the extrusion right here and we're going to put two of the little 2020 cable clips that we used up top here into the bottom to secure the cable. So all you're going to do now with the cable hanging freely and the gantry all the way at the top is put the cable in the extrusion and then put one of the cable clips in and then push it in. It'll clip in just like that. And you want to have this first clip right about the same position as the extrusion right here. And you want to have this first clip right at the same position as the little metal block that holds the Z motor in place. And then make sure this is, and make sure this is in all the way. And we're going to put one more down right here to keep this from moving. Now our cable is secured and the last thing we need to do is route this into the inside of the machine. So lucky for us on this printer there's actually a little gap between the board and this extrusion here. When you insert the cable you want to make sure this locking tab is towards the extrusion and not towards here so it doesn't get caught on the PCB. And just like that the cable is now inside the printer and we can go on the inside to hook this up to the EZABL board. Go ahead and push the extra cable down in. We have the two cable clips on the side here. And then we feed this down in to the bottom of the printer so we can hook this up to the EZABL control board. So now that our cable work is done, all we need to do now is put the wheel back on along with its bolt, eccentric nut, and washer so this isn't flapping about. So when we put this back on, we got to make sure everything goes in the correct order. The first thing that go on is the eccentric nut. If you notice, it's got a little round part here on the nut and that needs to go towards the back plate. So you can see here, I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the bolt back through. Next, we gotta put the brass washer back on, then the wheel. And the last part is the nylon lock nut that came off of it. Now once it's hand tight, go ahead and grab your pliers and your hex key. Make sure the wheel, if you notice here, kind of snapped up. You want the wheel to be in the extrusion and flat before you tighten this all up. So get a finger tight. So go ahead and grab the nut on the back with a pair of pliers or a socket and then tighten up the nut and the bolt, but do not over tighten it. Just get it snug because if you over tighten this, you can damage the bearing in these wheels. Now, if you notice here, this is loose. We're going to go ahead and adjust the eccentric nut so the carriage is not loose anymore. So take the wrench that came with your printer, put it onto the eccentric nut, and give it a little turn. And now you can see here, it's nice and tight. The carriage is not wobbling. And the eccentric nut should not be adjusted in a way that there's a ton of pressure on this wheel. If you hold the carriage, you should be able to grab it here and break it loose a little bit just by using your two fingers. If you can't break it loose easily, like I can here, then it's too tight. If it spins freely when you go like this, then it's too loose. So now that this is reinstalled and adjusted, we can move to the bottom portion of the printer where we're going to connect up the sensor to the board and connect our board to the printer's main board. So the first thing we need to do is remove our Z end stop plug. If you notice, this is labeled Z minus. If yours doesn't have the Z minus for some reason, you want to look for the one that's the bottom left on this board. Go ahead and unplug it. And this cable is just going to not be used going forward. Now what you're going to do is use the Sidewinder X1 Easy ABL signal cable and plug it in where we unplugged the Z end stop from, just like that. And then this other end is going to go to our Easy ABL control board. So now that we have our signal wire, we need to get it over here. I'm going to route mine with all these other wires here. So you might have to pull this off. And then go ahead and put the signal wire in. And put the cap back on. So the next step I'm going to do is plug in my signal wire. And my easy ABL sensor plug. So go ahead and take the included wire that comes with the Easy ABL kit. Figure out the length you're going to need. So I'm going to need about this much and I'm going to go ahead and cut this and strip it and I'll be right back. So we do include a screwdriver with the kits, but I like to use my larger one here. 
and this is a number two flathead. So go ahead and unscrew the screw terminal just until the head is flush. Now, if you go too far, the screws can fall out, so be careful. So now that the terminals are loosened up, we gotta put the wires into the terminals. Make sure red goes a positive and black goes a negative. Hold it in place and you should not see any wires sticking out between the terminal and the casing. Now, make sure you do not over tighten these. These are small terminals, but go ahead and give it a tug and if the wires don't come out, then you're good. If they do, loosen it up and put them back in. So the last thing we need to do before closing this up is set the easy switch here to the top position, if it's not already, and then go ahead and put the cover on. Make sure when you put the cover on that the wire goes into the little channel, and then you're gonna push the cover on until you hear a snap, just like that. So to connect power, it's very simple, but you have to make sure you use the right terminals. If you see here, these three here labeled L, N, and G, these are the ones coming from the wall. You should never touch these if the printer's plugged in. Right now my printer is unplugged. Where you want to connect the easy ABL power is onto this spare V minus and V plus. These are the 24 volt DC output. So go ahead and flip up the little cover here. Then take a Phillips and unscrew the terminal just a couple of turns for both of these. Now when you connect this, make sure that the red wire goes to V plus and the black wire goes to V negative. So go ahead and spread the wires out a little bit. Slide them underneath the terminal here. and tighten it down. Now don't over tighten it because you can crimp the wire. But it should look just like that. Go ahead and flip this back down. So if you recall from the first step, we actually took a T-nut and an M3 screw off of the board when we were routing the cable. You can actually use this to secure the Easy ABL case to the printer. I'm gonna put it in this hole here, put the T-nut on the back, and then go ahead and put it into the extrusion and tighten it down. So now you can see here, this is all secure in here. This isn't gonna go anywhere. If you wanna go ahead and cable manage your wires better, you can, but these lengths are pretty perfect for this machine. There's not a ton of slack left over. And if you cut this the right length, you can see it's nice and clean. So we can go ahead and put the bottom of the printer back on and we're gonna go ahead and show you how to do the firmware. So now that we have the hardware installed on our Sidewinder X1, the next thing we need to do is get the firmware to actually tell the printer how to use the sensor. So if you head to uf2.th3dstudio.com, you'll be taken to our Unified 2 firmware page. Now this printer uses our new Unified 2 firmware, which does require VS Code to compile. So if you haven't already set up VS Code on your computer, go ahead and check out our video on setting up VS Code. There's a link in the video description to do that. So if we look on our Unified 2 firmware page, you'll see a Sidewinder X1 firmware with the MKS Gen L board. Go ahead and click that. And right here, you'll see the Unified 2 firmware for the Sidewinder X1. There's a download link. So go ahead and download that and open up the zip file. Now in this zip file, you'll have a couple of folders. There's installation guide for the Easy Out and the Easy ABL Pro. In this folder, there's STL files for all sorts of different Easy ABL mounts that you might need, including the Artillery Sidewinder X1 mount and the cable clips that we showed in the video earlier. So if you're watching this before you have it installed, the cable clips are inside the zip file with the OEM mount. So what we want to do is go ahead and extract this firmware folder, this is the one we need, to somewhere on your computer. So wherever you prefer to put your files, go ahead and extract this folder. In my case, I have a dedicated folder where I put all my printer firmware, so I'm going to go ahead and make the new one. Now, you don't need to do this, but it does help to keep organized. And all we want to do is drag the firmware folder into this one, and this is the folder we're now going to open in VS Code. You have to open the actual folder that's called firmware. So what I like to do is go into this folder, copy my path, and now let's go ahead and launch VS Code. 
So now that VS Code's loaded up, and this is again assuming that you set VS Code up per our installation materials to get VS Code set up for compiling firmware. All we have to do now is hit open folder, paste in the directory, because I copied it. If you didn't copy it, you're gonna have to manually navigate there. Go ahead and hit enter, and then select folder. So go ahead and click the little arrow here to expand, and all you need to do is double click configuration.h. And you'll see you'll get a window open here with all the text. So since I'm dealing with the Signwinder X1, I want to go ahead and delete these two slashes in front of the defined Sidewinder X1. And then I'm also using the OEM EZABL mount, so go ahead and delete those two slashes there. And this is all that you need to do to get it running. All we need to do now is make sure this compiles. So you can go ahead in the lower left hand corner and press the little check mark. This little check mark down in the lower left hand corner is what you need to click. Now if for some reason you don't have this, you can right click on this bar and if I uncheck this, you'll see that goes away. So if yours looks like this, where there's no check boxes or anything down here, go ahead and right click and make sure platform IO IDE extension is checked and that'll bring this back. So let's see if this compiles. So go ahead and hit the little check box. And depending on the speed of your computer, this may take 40 seconds, it may take five minutes. So just go ahead and let this build and I'll be right back. My build passed and I can tell that because it says Mega 2560 success. So if you have any sort of errors down here, and you shouldn't, but if you do, go ahead and double check that you didn't accidentally put any characters in where they aren't supposed to be, or if you forgot to uncomment a line. So now we know that the firmware is set up and built correctly, we need to upload it to our printer. Now, if you're someone that doesn't have a bunch of stuff connected to their computer like I do, then you should just be able to plug the USB cable in from the printer to your computer and upload the firmware. Now, if you're someone that has a bunch of other devices like I do, I've got a bunch of other peripherals that show up as COM ports. Platform IO might not be able to determine what port your printer's on. So I'm gonna run you guys through how to set your COM port really quick manually in the event that the auto detect doesn't fail. And it's pretty simple. All you need to do is open the platform io.ini file on the left. And if you look, you can see that we have our default environment set to the Mega 2560. So what I'll do to get to the location quick is copy this, do a find, which is control F, and then it'll automatically populate this with Mega 25 Sissy, as you can see here. So go ahead and hit enter, and you'll see we'll jump down to the environment setting. And I've added in these lines here so that you can manually specify a COM port. So all you need to do is get rid of this little pound sign and then you put your COM port in here. Now, if you're not sure what COM port your printer's on, you can actually do it within Platform IO inside of VS Code. So if you go down to the lower left here, there's a little house icon that's hidden behind my TH3D logo. It'll take you to the Platform IO homepage. But if you look on the left-hand side, you'll see we have a devices icon. And you can see here, even though I don't have the printer plugged in, I already have four COM ports showing up on my computer and none of these are the printer. So now I'm gonna go ahead and plug my printer in. And if we go ahead and hit the refresh button, that's right here, you'll now see that we have five devices listed and we can see that COM14 was not there before we plugged it in. So now we know that it's on COM14, all we need to do is put COM14 right here and make sure you're in the Mega 2560 section. Go ahead and save the file. And now we can go ahead and hit upload. Now this is going to compile the firmware and upload it to our printer board. Now, if you have any other programs that might connect to that COM port, like G-code senders, like Pronterface, or slicers that connect over the COM port, like Simplify 3D or Kira or Prusa Slicer, make sure those are closed because if something is connecting to that COM port, it's not going to be able to upload the firmware. So again, this will take anywhere from 30 seconds to a couple minutes, depending on the speed of your machine. And then it's gonna go ahead and upload the firmware. So we can see that it compiled, and now we have a status output here where it's actually writing the firmware to the printer. It's also then going to do, it'll do a write, and then it will do a read to make sure that the data that's on the board matches what the program compile is. And then once it's done doing the flash, you'll see the LCD will reboot just like that it'll show our logo 
and then the Marlin splash screen, and it'll show you what version of our firmware you're on. So now before we begin, we wanna go ahead and preheat the machine to our PLA print settings. You can do this through the LCD. And we wanna go ahead and preheat the bed. If you have stuff on your nozzle, go ahead and do the normal preheat. And go ahead and let your bed get up to temperature. And again, if your nozzle has stuff on it, go ahead and heat this up and clean it off. Now, the first quick check you can do is make sure that your sensor is getting power and it's triggering. If you notice on here, we have a green LED on the side that indicates that indicates the sensor has power. If you touch the bottom of the sensor, you'll see it goes from green to red. And this little adjustment screw here is how we set the sensitivity. Now, to make sure that everything's working correctly before we go further, go ahead and press the button, go down to motion, and select auto home. You'll see the X and Y axes home. And as it starts going down, go ahead and touch the sensor right there and you should see the gantry stop. Now, if your sensor doesn't stop the Z from moving like mine did, then go ahead and double check your connections in the control box and make sure you have the little switch set correctly on the EZABL control board in here. But since we know it's detecting and it's sending a signal back to the board, we can go ahead and calibrate it. So what we need to do is make sure that this sensor is two millimeters higher than our nozzle and we're going to calibrate the sensor with the nozzle two millimeters off the bed. So I'm going to go ahead and make my Z go down by using the LCD screen. Now, once you start getting close to the bed, I was using the 10 millimeter there. Go ahead and switch to the move point one on the LCD. I'm sorry this is not easy to see, but the backlight's kind of blowing it out. and go ahead and move it down until the nozzle is just on the bed. So now that my nozzle's on the bed, you wanna make sure there's a distance of two millimeters between the bottom of the sensor and your bed. The easiest way to do this is to take the wrench that's included with most of these printers and set it underneath here. And you can see here, I already have it at that correct height. And all you need to do to adjust it is loosen up these nuts until you get it to the correct height and then tighten them back down. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that they're tight. And that's all we need to do. The last step is going to be setting the calibration distance. So move the nozzle up two millimeters with your LCD. And if you see here, the sensor is not detecting the bed. So what we need to do is adjust the sensitivity on the sensor until the red light comes on, even when the screwdriver is away from the sensor. So if your light's green, you're going to turn it clockwise. If it's red, turn it counterclockwise until it turns green, and then follow these steps. All you need to do is slowly turn this adjustment screw clockwise until the sensor light turns red. So as you can see now, the sensor light is red even when I pull my screwdriver away, so the sensor is now calibrated. So at this point, we're safe to home the machine now. So if you press the menu button here, go to motion, and then auto home, the printer will home all its axes. Now since I moved the gantry down with the LCD, it will bring it back up before it starts a home, and this is normal. And now we're going through the regular home procedure. You'll see X and Y home, and now it will home the Z. And that's it. So we've got the sensor installed. We've got the firmware updated. The sensor is calibrated and mounted correctly. We're ready to print. All you need to do at this point is look at the EZABL documentation and go ahead and use the starting G code that we provide and put that into your slicer starting code. If you're not sure how to do that, we do have an article on our site about updating your slicer starting code and where those are located. And that's it. We're all done. I hope you guys enjoy the Easy ABL kit on the Sidewinder X1. And I hope you guys like this installation guide. I apologize that the LCD is kind of hard to see on some of the shots in the video, but because of the backlight, it kind of blows out the camera and it doesn't do very well with that. But if you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I do want to mention that you do need our Easy LCD kit on this and the stock touchscreen that comes with this printer is not supported. 
The reason it's not supported is because it runs closed source firmware and we're not able to do custom modifications to it where we can add different buttons or even have it work like a traditional Marlin LCD. So that's the reason behind actually needing the LCD conversion kit. With the LCD conversion kit, you do get a lot more control over your printer. You can adjust many different settings like your acceleration, jerk, steps per millimeter, that kind of stuff directly from the screen. This firmware also brings features like PID auto tuning, so you can do that from the screen as well, as well as many other features that are in Marlin. So I hope you guys enjoy this kit and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, happy printing.